Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Explosion. So, last time we had a little bit of fun with some non-productive fireworks show type stuff. We blew up a lot of boosters with a lot of Separatrons attached to them. Uh, had a lot of fun. So this time I was thinking, instead of launching fireworks type stuff directly from the launch pad, what if we sent a ship up into the air and then had it separate and explode that might be even more fun even more awesome and we're going to scale things up so instead of using boosters we're going to use mainsails and instead of using separatrons we're going to use boosters so the whole thing just got bigger and i'm using a tiny little tank on this mainsail so that we can get a silly amount of acceleration terminal velocity kiss my butt oh my gosh Uh, <laughs> yeah, take that, VAB. Suck it. That, that didn't exactly go the way I wanted. Let's try that again. All right, let's try. No. Great. So that was obviously a little bit too much asymmetry for the main sail to account for. It can only gimbal so much, right? So... Um, I added six more, and we're gonna launch this thing up into the air and see what happens. Oh, yes. We are so far past terminal velocity. Suck it! Atmosphere. Oh, look at this. We're gonna get the uh, atmospheric re-entry effect. And we're going upwards. And split. Alright, not ex exactly what I was going for. Hmm... So maybe the boosters are a little bit too much for this kind of idea. Let's go back to the Separatrons and see what we can do with this. And maybe I'll throttle down a little bit. <laughs> Kaboom! <laughs> Look at that thrust. That's awesome. I wish all my rockets were this fast off the, off the tarmac. Okay, so we're up a decent height. Let's throttle down to about here. And Separatrons! Whoa! What the heck? What happened there? Okay, they're doing a dance of death and dismemberment. And I can't see at all what's going on. Okay, maybe this isn't the greatest idea. Oh, are they coming back? I think they're coming back. No, they're flying away. Okay, so this is more like it. Um, I looked at the report and it turns out that the exhaust from the mainsails damaged the little probe core so much that it blew up as soon as we did that. Let's see what sort of thrust we can get out of this many mainsails. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that! Goodbye, ground! <laughs> Suck at gravity! Alright, so I'm gonna throttle down once we get... Whoa, look at that re-entry effect in reverse. Okay, throttle way down to here. And boom! Whoa! All right. Uh, not exactly what I was going for. But that was some crazy, crazy acceleration there. Okay, so let's try something a little different. Let's try to get as much acceleration as we can out of this little guy. Tiny little tanks and nine main sails with fuel lines hooked up. Here we go. Hut hat, are you ready? Hut hat's always ready. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. Here we go, and stage. There's four. Okay, now we've got the uh, the atmosphere. Whoa, okay. I guess that was a little bit too much acceleration, but that gives me an idea. How far can we take this concept? Let's go ahead and release the parachute. Let's uh, Let's take that one degree farther. Okay, so I'll admit, it's possible I got a little bit carried away. <laughs> I spent a little bit of time making this rocket and optimizing it. Well, it's not really optimized. I wouldn't say that. Um, because I kind of went from one premise to a second halfway through to the design, as you can see by the huge orange tanks on the outside. Decided to make another Sundiver rocket. We got such cool acceleration out of that first one. I thought, let's just keep going. Let's keep adding more. And I think I have something like 73 mainsail engines right now. 
Newbie. Newbie Kerman, are you ready? That's right. We've got Newbie Kerman, who is our our test pilot today. And he's on a one-way trip. He ain't coming back, that's for sure. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Oh, so slow. Three frames per second. It'll get better. It'll get better. Once we get rid of some of these parts. I think this has uh, more parts than any of my other rockets. This has like 1,100 parts, which the game really does not like. And we can't even use the full acceleration. Well, I decided to put these big orange tanks on the outside uh, to try to get out of the thick part of the atmosphere before we throttle up. But really, as we saw with the, the previous clip, where we only had the nine main sails, even going full bore with those, the whole thing just flew apart. It was too much thrust, unless I just put a ridiculous amount of struts on the thing. And I do have more struts on this, on the center section. And I kind of had to redesign it so it's not that uh, perfect grid. We've got eight-way symmetry. Well, it's actually two times symmetry times four. But we've got eight-way symmetry going. Whoa! Oh, that's the, uh, that's the tanks hitting the ground. There goes another one. Newbie, you look like you're having a good time. I'm happy for you. Um, so, yeah, the... the uh, the ship itself cannot stand the the forces created by the thrust. Plus, I've got big tanks on the outside, which are heavier, and so they're putting uh, these outer mainsails are actually going slower than the inner mainsails, and the inner mainsails are having to prop them up. That's why I needed all these struts connecting the outer mainsails to the inner tanks. Uh, the, these big orange tanks connected to the uh, the inner tanks. Because they're heavier, they're actually going slower, and they're being propped up by these inner ones. But I wanted the, more, the bigger fuel. Like I said, I changed premises halfway through. And after having made this, I kind of wanted to return to my original Sundiver design, which was all mainsails. It was kind of similar to this, but it didn't have as many engines. So I, I kind of... I'm, I'm tempted to remake that ship with this design, the, the staging system and sequence and see just what we can do we are now we just passed 3,000 meters and we are going 127 meters per second which is good the terminal velocity at 3,000 meters is 134 so we're just below that pretty good pretty good 4,000 meters terminal velocity is 148 so we're staying underneath that that's what I wanted I wanted to use these orange tanks to get out of that thick part of the atmosphere and then we can speed up a little bit uh, but I do think this whole system would be better with only one type of tank. Just w orange tanks all the way through. And what that would do is it would equalize the thrust that each of these, uh, each of these mainsails is providing. Because right now, these outer ones are going slower, and it's, it's causing structural instability in the whole thing. You can see it's, the whole thing is kind of torquing a little bit, and that is not good. Uh, hopefully the whole thing doesn't fly apart, though. I added a lot of reinforcing struts in the, uh, the places where the we, we were getting tensile forces applied. All right, we have four more. And then as soon as we get rid of the last of the orange tanks, we will start our gravity turn. And I actually, I have this, these tanks here, these secondary tanks, just so we could put the decouplers a little bit higher. And, um, oh gosh, so that the main sails of these orange tanks would be at the same level as the other tanks. Originally, I wasn't using the launch control platforms or the, the towers, the launch control towers. I had the whole thing sitting on the, the tarmac itself because I, I thought, okay, here we go. Let's start our gravity turn. Um, I thought it would be easier that way in, instead of having to hang everything. Okay. Now, a strange thing just about the way the thing, um, uh, the uh, staging, we've got these clusters of three rockets at the end, so I'm going to have to wait until two of the tanks are empty before I drop them because both of these are going to drop right here. Right now, like that. 
And then I have an empty stage. Just for no good reason. Oh gosh. <laughs> so cumbersome. So cumbersome. Uh, so for, for this one, I decided to put it in orbit around Kerbin before shooting for the sun. We are headed for the sun with this guy to see how close we can get. I don't think it's going to be as good as our previous station. Oh, crap. I didn't wait long enough. That's a waste of two of those tanks. Great. Oh, well. Oh, well. Um, and we've got quite a bit of rotational force. Okay, let's drop that. So I'm trying to counteract that. Once we get rid of this outer ring, it'll get a little bit better. We do have some weird asymmetry going. Oh, crap. Did I do it again? I did. No! What did I lose? Oh, dang it. I lost the tank. Okay, we're going to have to do this part over. Okay, let's uh, cut the engines. Newbie. Emergency escape. Oh, does he have parachutes? Uh, no, there's no parachutes. Okay, newbie. Sorry, buddy. Uh, tell you what, let's, um, we could probably make a landing. Let's get rid of everything except the center, like, the center eight. Or I guess it's nine. There we go. All right, we can definitely land this sucker. And then we can jettison him at the last second. All right, <laughs> new goal for the rest of this mission. We just want newbie not to die so that we can send him out to the sun. Okay, stop. Oh, now I'm out of... Great. Great. Get over to your retrograde marker. We've got a ways to fall. Uh, we could put him in orbit, but really, I want to reuse this guy. Okay, stay there. Stay there. Don't move. And let's speed up a bit until we're falling a bit, and then we'll uh, we'll try to cushion his blow into the ground. And then next time, we will shoot for the sun and see what we can do. Newbie! Oh, come on, newbie! Oh, he loves it. Yeah, he's a trooper. I picked a guy with uh, high stupidity and moderate amounts of courage for this mission, and I think I chose well. 750 meters per second, which is no big deal at all. The, the only real question is when to start our burn to uh, cushion our blow into the ocean. The ocean looks very textured right now, doesn't it? It's very odd. Okay, we've got the re-entry going on, and just the atmosphere itself is actually going to slow us down quite a bit. This should actually be pretty, pretty easy. Newbie, calm down, buddy. You're having too much fun. We could deploy... Oh, okay. There, there goes our solar panels, I was going to say. Let's try deploying the solar panels and see what happens. And of course... The thickness of the atmosphere is not conducive to deploying your solar panels in a situation like that. Yeah, this is actually going to be way easier than I even thought, uh, just because of the atmosphere slowing us down. We may not even need to fire our engines. I wonder how slow we're actually going to get. We'll just we'll fire them right at the last second and see what happens. Newbie. Have faith, newbie. I'll save you. I'll save you, newbie. 600? Okay, let's start here. Oh, no problem. No problem. Yeah! Wait, did he survive? Newbie! <laughs> Look at him bouncing on the water. I didn't know they would float. Newbie! No, newbie! I'm sorry, newbie. I'm sorry, newbie. I'm sorry. Well, next time, we will pick another chump, and we will try to uh, to get as close as the sun as possible with this rocket without it exploding in space. Sorry, newbie. See you next time. Bye-bye.